Yes. Pragmatically, if your nation's at war, you need fighting men that will effectively be cannon fodder. Now, you could argue in today's modern warfare, this is changing due to things like AI and remote warfare. And I am not a warfare expert, but I have talked to people who are in the know, and most of them still believe that there's going to be a huge component of boots on the ground, which is to say you will need foot soldiers. You will need male cannon fodder to throw at the enemy in some capacity. That's simply a fact. That doesn't make what you're doing noble, though. Because even if you think the cause is noble, say, the veterans who fought in World War II against the evil Axis powers, they're still losing out on other things. Now, you could argue it's necessary in that case, and it was necessary in that case. That's fine. But it doesn't mean that it was good for them. And I think it's important to differentiate this. That there's something you can do, some people view it as honorable, but it doesn't mean that it's good for these guys. Because oftentimes the quote-unquote honorable thing to do, i.e. the thing that society and the world expects you to do, is the thing that's difficult that will actually immiserate you and make your life worse. That's the whole point of honor. It's a tricky, difficult thing to engage in. Now, it's been said many times in the past, particularly if you look at some of the imagery of World War II, that the honor of the veterans was venerated and that they were, in fact, venerated and appreciated especially when they came back from the war, you can see all the photos and images, and they were revered because of their service to their country. Now, let's just pause that for a second and believe that that's true, that they actually, in fact, were appreciated, they were revered because they fought the good fight and some of them sacrificed their lives to do that. Okay, we pause there and then we move forward to 2024. Are we even remotely in the same situation? Think about that for a second. Probably not, almost certainly not. It's obviously not the case. Now, I do want to throw something else out there, namely the fact that it's unlikely that the glorification we saw of the soldiers post-World War II, that that was kind of a regularity, because war has been around for a long time. The Sumerians were the first literate civilization. Warfare existed way before that. But let's be really, really conservative here and say war started about 6,000 years ago. That's not true, but we'll just map it on to literate civilization okay, do you really think the soldiers in antiquity and ancient Mesopotamia in Rome were all honored? Probably not, because the reality is, and this has always been the case, war is old men talking and young men dying. It's just the way it is. And this is where you need the belief in a noble cause, the male cause. What can a man believe in? What ought he fight for? Because certainly in previous times, there are many things you need to fight against, Frequently, it was opposing nations and opposing men. Not always, but very frequently. And so that's where these kind of warm, fuzzy feelings of tribalism, nationalism tend to do a lot of good. And in some sense, it's true. Men collectively need to believe in some big lie. Because let's be honest. Once you lose your life, you lose your life. Now, especially if you're a young man that might have had an enjoyable time on Earth, or not even an enjoyable time, just a fulfilling time on Earth, Losing your life in your late teens or early 20s is tragic. And the way we try to mollify that fact is by saying, well, Jack, he was only 22, but he died for a noble cause. He did the right thing. Jack is gone, though. Jack doesn't care. It doesn't really matter. And maybe Jack believed in the noble cause, the noble lie, you could say. There are many noble lies that we seem to need to believe in in order to operate and function in this world, especially collectively at the level of society. But you really need to let that sink in. Jack is dead. He's not coming back. So it doesn't matter if he believed in his noble lie or not. And it doesn't matter if the noble lie speaks to a higher truth or not. But yes, back in the day, in a civilization that was significantly less atomized, less at odds with itself, not just with other nations, that's an important point to stress here, less at odds with itself, many men indeed felt like it was worth fighting for certain causes, irrespective of the ultimate truth behind that cause. And I really think that Vietnam was a huge turning point. People forget about this often because it was a long time ago, and Zoomers and Millennials barely have an idea about it. But when I was growing up, as many of you who are also Gen Xers, you hear a lot about Vietnam, and you'd see a lot of Vietnamese vets on the streets frequently. And when those guys came home, they were spat on because Vietnam in many ways was the first slide into America simply attempting to maintain its global political hegemony by poking its nose in a country it shouldn't have. 
And you fast forward to now, and you really have to wonder, in today's hyper-atomized society, what could be the clarion call for men to want to fight under a unified banner? Because although I myself have never participated in the military, virtually to a man of the many hundreds of men I've spoken to over my lifetime who've actively participated in the military, I'd say something like 90% upwards join the military, Marines, Army, whatever it might be, because financially, that was the wisest decision. Many of them came from poor backgrounds. Many of them came from difficult backgrounds. And basically, joining the U.S. military gave them a leg up. It wasn't for any grand or noble cause. It was because that was the best option available to them. Now, that doesn't mean that some of these guys were not quote-unquote patriotic or that they didn't fight in whatever causes they fought in. They did. But that's not exactly the rallying cry of a warrior saying, well, I didn't have a lot of financial options and I couldn't afford university, so I joined the military and they helped me out with the GI Bill or something like that. Something that people even did back in antiquity. It's not like it's uncommon. It's just not particularly glorious and doesn't really lend itself well to the kind of state propaganda you are want to hear frequently. So we're at a stage now where most men aren't buying it. People can talk about World War II or World War I and all they want and all the noble causes that used to exist back in the day, but it's called back in the day for a reason. In 2024, it's very difficult to see men rallying around a cause to fight for something that's quote-unquote greater than themselves. Men aren't buying it. And to be honest, this was also the case 50 years ago. All the human life lost, both on the side of the Vietnamese and the Americans and the Vietnamese vets coming home, maimed, disabled, with shattered minds, among many other things, there's no reward for that, save for a life of misery. Which is why the draft was dropped after Vietnam. There's a reason why it was dropped, because it wasn't popular, because people realized they were fighting for nothing. Men are simply not going to buy the lies of state-spun propaganda about fighting in some war, as if it were something noble and worthwhile throwing your life away for. There will be no gratitude from the state and no gratitude likely from the people that you know. Unlike if you want to be charitable back in the day in World War II, which probably if it was true was an anomaly in history, this notion that vets were universally accepted, revered, and appreciated upon returning back. Who knows? We live in a time without higher causes, which is why many of us as individuals tend to end up fighting for all manner of causes, because these days online, there are probably thousands of them, if not millions, because people do need something to believe in, and men especially need something to believe in, something greater than themselves. It's just that war and the state propaganda that produces it doesn't seem to be one of the things that men are amenable to anymore. And more importantly, they're not buying it, and they don't believe it. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in.